a rose by any other name would smell of stigma or the psychologically important difference between being a person with autism or an autistic person. So I shall pose a question. Is identifying with social groups beneficial to people's health and well-being? Whilst marking undergrad essays on this question back in 2020, my mind began to wander, as it is prone to do, to autistic things. Although my PhD was in the field of social psychology, attempting to reduce mental health stigma with the neurodiversity narrative, I had become so engrossed in my little sliver of the field, I forgot about other social psychological theories and approaches. I researched the references my students were citing and made a short Twitter thread of my thoughts regarding the psychologically important difference between being a person with autism and an autistic person. The difference between belonging to a stigmatised group and the social cure properties of strongly identifying with an autistic identity. In that Twitter thread I started by saying that belonging to a stigmatised group, for instance people with autism, and internalising the stigma can negatively affect psychological and physical health. Let's break that down. To be a person with autism, a person labelled, sometimes officially, with a medical disorder, means we as autistic people are categorised into a certain box. Even before being diagnosed or knowing of our diagnosis, our behaviours are called out as odd and weird, and we are labelled standoffish, cold and unapproachable. For instance, this picture of my friend Annette's shoulder has words written in Sharpie permanent marker. Annette bears three words used to describe me throughout my adult life. Those words cold, standoffish, unapproachable were internalised until I discovered I was autistic in 2016. This labelled box, person or people with autism, is imbued with meaning, with values and assumptions that dictate action. A case in point would be Greta Thunberg. As well as receiving sexist, misogynistic attacks, Greta has been harassed, stigmatised and infantilised for being a person with autism. Receiving the sorts of comments autistic people hear far too often, such as how Greta is a mentally ill Swedish child, deeply disturbed, makes bizarre facial expressions, is a girl who has a cyborg face that ignores emotion. I will not link the original perpetrators of these insults. They are undeserving of the citations. There are a number of reasons that Greta has received these insults. Largely, they are a tactic to discredit her activism. What I am highlighting, however, is the content of the attacks, the narrative that is being told, and consequently what autistic people the world over are hearing, a pathologising othering of our experience of and with the world. Our difference is used against us, embedded in a narrative that we are not normal, that we are abnormal, that we are disordered people with autism spectrum disorder. But what's wrong with stating you're a person with autism? It's what you are, isn't it? And we've been taught it's polite to put the person first. We hear all too often. When someone insists that I am a person with autism, they are telling me that they believe I have something that if science could eradicate would mean I would be normal. It is not non-autistic people's fault. The culture of autism, the dominant narrative, one of many and not even the most persuasive, tells you, tells me, that I have an autism spectrum disorder. Break that phrase down. I have, not I am, but I have. I carry. I could theoretically put down autism. And this is offered as the preferred outcome, the ability to be removed from my autism because I am disordered. Disorder, illness, sickness, something attached to me, something not desirable, not meant to be there, without which I could be well, normal, healthy. Disordered because the language used to describe my experience and interaction with the world is one of deficit, where I lack typical and normal functions, dictated by a faceless society and a faceless medical body, where I was diagnosed under these criteria. Autism as an abstract concept is defined as a persistent impairment in reciprocal social communication and interaction, restricted and repetitive patterns of behaviour, interests or activities, all of which may relate to hyperreactivity, avoidance, or hyporeactivity, sense-seeking, to sensory input, with or without accompanying intellectual disability and or language impairment. As you can see, the medical diagnosis in itself is stigmatising. It ignores any possible strengths and capabilities I and my fellow autistic community members have, 
Yes, including those classed as low functioning, those with intellectual and language disabilities. We hear the words deficit, low and high functioning, like we are robots with cogs and gears that are functioning suboptimally. Social communication impairment, restricted behaviour. We hear we are the problem, the disordered person, and we internalise this narrative as self-stigma. This happens because we are led to believe that there is such a thing as normal, that anything that deviates is thus abnormal. Not different, not merely divergent, but disordered. If the dominant narrative, those around you, the films and shows you watch, the books you read, the school you are educated at, the lessons you learn as part of the curriculum, the regulations in workplaces and the people who employ you, the police, mental health services, diagnostic manuals, everyone is telling you, you are wrong. You have an autism spectrum disorder, that you are thought of and treated as less than others, where you are infantilised or feared, avoided or detained. It makes it nigh on impossible to have a positive sense of self, a positive social identity based on the fundamental experiences one has of the world. The language, the narrative feeds embodied actions of those who are non-autistic, the neurotypical, the neuronormative around us, and these become internalised. I belong to the category people with autism. This category is imbued with stigma, negative labelling, because not all labels are negative, stereotyping attitudes, prejudice and discriminatory behaviours. Belonging to this category is isolating, depressing and hopeless. I am socially cursed by belonging to the category of people with autism. As you can imagine, both the public and internalised self-stigma has a negative impact on one's psychological and physical health. As a population, people with autism experience greater traumatising experiences such as bullying and loneliness. For being different, we are more likely to be victims of neglect and abuse. We experience higher baselines of anxiety than neurotypical people, greater rates of depression and higher rates of suicidal ideation and attempts to die by suicide. We experience the same mental health concerns that affect non-autistic populations, but to a greater extent because of the link to greater rates of trauma. And so, as a minority group, people with autism are likely to experience minority stress and stigma by virtue of non-adherence to societal norms and expectations. Simply put, as a minority, people with autism are different to what is expected of members of society, and so we are thought of and treated differently. This stigma leads to social disadvantages. As a minority, group members experience greater stress, and due to our standing in society, we do not have the resources, social, psychological or material, to manage this stress. However, one can protect oneself from this stigma to some extent via different means. For instance, Distancing oneself from the group by saying, I am not like those low functioning people with autism. Or the opposite, by more closely socially identifying with the group autistic, so as to feel the effect of group protective properties, such as resources, peer support, meaning and belonging and so on. And so there can be a social cure. There is hope if we identify with the social identity autistic, connecting with autistic culture. Autism, remember, is a reified, abstract construct, whereas autistic people and our culture less so. Connecting with the autistic community, we can learn a narrative that makes logical sense of our difference, that provides connection, not isolation. An autistic community definition of autism defines our difference within the neurodiversity paradigm, where difference is difference, not less where autism is a neurodevelopmental difference where autistic brains work differently to non-autistic people, where there are as many different brains and ways of experiencing the world as there are different bodies. There is a variety of autistic people just as there is a variety of non-autistic people, but all autistic people share some similarities and that's what connects us. These similarities include differences in experience of the sensory world, communication differences, thinking, socialising and moving. Some autistic people need support with day-to-day -day living and within this perspective there is no one way to be autistic. Evidence is mounting that what is important for autistic well-being is autistic friendship, community and peer support. For instance, a study by Crompton et al. uses a quote from an autistic interviewee for its title, I never realised everybody felt as happy as I do when I'm around autistic people. A thematic analysis of autistic adults' relationships with autistic and neurotypical friends and family. Myself, 
I see the protective social cure properties of community and space in my co-founded So Your Autistic program, which is a pre and post discovery support program. We also have a University of Kent Autistics group, both run by me and Annette Foster. Some of our aims in these community spaces are to help students foster a positive autistic identity, to deconstruct the pathologising person with autism narrative and ultimately help bring previously isolated autistic people together to foster a sense of community. Creating these autistic spaces, not non-autistic person with autism spaces, seems to encourage its members to be their authentic selves without judgement. Encouragingly, we also see an improvement in well-being with reductions in harmful stims, self-stimulatory behaviours that inadvertently harm. We see reductions in depression and burnout. Evidence is also demonstrating the protective properties of a strong autistic social identity. For instance, Cooper et al. in 2017 found that participants in their study who had strong autistic social identities had greater collective self-esteem for the autistic community, which in turn predicted greater positive personal self-esteem, ultimately predicting reduced levels of anxiety and depression, which, as we know, are higher in the autistic community. So, when people ask why we want to be diagnosed or discovered to associate with other people with autism, why we insist on identifying as autistic to be that pesky autistic community, whether we know it or not, in part, it is because the alternative is to still belong to a stigmatised group and to internalise the stigma to the detriment of our psychological and social need to belong. Without strongly identifying with the autistic identity, the community, we do not feel positive belongingness. Our physical and psychological well-being is damaged. We do not have peer resources to lean on. We lack meaning, things groups and identities provide. And so, I belong to the stigmatised group of people with autism, but I strongly socially identify with the identity autistic, to belong, have a sense of meaning, to have peer support. The autistic identity more specifically, the autistic community is my social cure and it's beautiful. Where before we were isolated by belonging to the group people with autism, we come to embrace the autistic identity, culture, community and space. We are no longer alone. We are connected, connected by one word, autistic. The autistic identity, the community, helps start the process of removing the lifelong pain of prejudice and discrimination for being different. We start to scrub off the sharpie drawn tattoos together. It hurts, it takes time, there is residue, but we can start to connect and heal. Ultimately, autistic identity, community, culture and ideally spaces protect against the stigma of belonging to the group people with autism. This is why, regardless of whether you personally agree that I am a person with autism spectrum disorder or an autistic person, strong identification with the identity autistic has important and protective well-being properties. And so, as you can see, a rose, autistic, by any other name, person with autism, reeks of stigma, suffused with negative stereotypes, prejudice and discriminatory behaviours. Or, why it is more important for me to be respected as autistic rather than a person with an autism spectrum disorder.